welcome to Southern Girl Knits, episode 33. Or at least I think it's episode 33. I'm pretty sure it's episode 33. <laughs> um, it's been so crazy, I don't know. But um, I'm Tish. I'm your host. And you can find me on Ravelry as TishKnits33. Or you can find me on Instagram as TishKnits. Although I'm pretty sure I should change my name to Coffee Addict. So, I feel like I'm going to like have a brand new start now because all of the surgery craziness is behind me and we're going to get into a rhythm here and everything's kind of slowing down and smoothing out and, you know, not to mitigate the fact that there is some craziness because, um, you know, we're a family of five and we have a life. <laughs> so there's some craziness going on. Um, but for the most part, everything's kind of fallen into a good little, you know, pattern. So I'm happy. I thrive on a schedule. I like schedules. I'm a big fan of schedules. <laughs> um, so it's Friday. Happy Friday. Um, on a sad note, it is 9-11. Um, a very, very sad day here in America um, for my international viewers. And I'm sure that you know as well because it was... Um, an historic event worldwide, um, but for here in America, it was it was um, it was very hard. It was very hard for our, for us that that we're old enough to remember that we're there. It's I kind of um, akin it to what maybe my grandparents felt when with Pearl Harbor, um, without all the mass media. You know, like here, there's so much mass media and so much, um, I say here, this this time, this day and age, there's so much mass media and there's so much um, drama in the media that that is unwarranted, in my opinion. You know, I can remember the first few hours of 9-11 having no idea what was actually happening, you know, um, it was it was horrible. It was very frightening. It was very traumatic. To this day, I still have a hard time talking about it and dealing with it. And, you know, I was, I'm one of the ones that, that didn't know anyone who perished that day. Um, but for those of you out there who, who did know someone or, or it affected your family in a personal way by losing a friend, a coworker, a family member, I, my heart goes out to you. I'm very, very sorry. Um, it's been 14 years, and the wound is still raw, very, very raw. I don't, I don't know if it'll ever go away, you know. But um, on to happier things, because um, we cannot dwell in such sadness, right? Right. We can remember, and we can honor, and we can move on. So. That's what we're going to do. We're going to move on. So, um, let's see. Hmm. All right. Last week I told you about the book I was reading, Seven Eves. I thought it was called Sevenses. I really shouldn't take medicine. <laughs> they had me on so much pain medicine. <laughs> it was ridiculous. <laughs> and so by the time I finished the book, I was like, this book is not called Sevenses. It's called Seven Eves. And it was by Neil Stevenson. And, you know, the crazy thing is the premise of the book, the plot of the book, great. He had a great story to tell. It was amazing. Um, I'm not sure if you can hear the Air Force plane going over. I, I don't know what you can hear and what you can't hear. Um, but I live by an Air Force base, and so planes go over all the time. So anyway, um, the book... I ended up having to rate the book like two stars because it was like a thousand page book and 500 pages of that was technical jargon that had no bearing on the book whatsoever. To the point where you were just like, seriously, seriously, uh, you know, it was so frustrating, but I had to finish the book because it really was a good book. Like the storyline, I don't know, craziness. I'm not going to recommend it. I'm really not. I'm not, you know, unless, unless you're a person who likes technical scientific technical things because it's a sci-fi book outer space um so there's a lot of technical outer spacey things going on and so if you like technical stuff like that this is definitely your book so um i 
had to find a new book because I can't go without a book. Yeah. So, um, I looked on Amazon. I've gotten quite good at getting myself around Amazon and finding people of like mind who are reading the same type of genre that I like, which is, I have a very eclectic taste in books. I really do. And, but I get in the mood for certain books. And, um, like when I recommended Ready Player One, oh my God, I'm not going to go through that again because I'm sure a lot of you are like, oh my God, she's talking about that book again. <laughs> Seriously, it's an amazing book. <laughs> I can't describe it. It's amazing. Um, and then I read The Martian, which was like super, uber amazing. And I told you about that. So go read that one next. Um, so I had to find another book that I was super excited about that I just... You know, you can't put down and you just love. And um, I found one called One Second After. It's kind of an, it's an old book in the sense that it was written in 2011. Right now, right? Um, but because it is about um, an end of the world scenario that involves um, an EMP, um, the politics uh, behind it are still new enough that it's relevant and the technology behind it makes it still relevant because it is only four years old. Um, so I'm only like 30% in, oh, I don't even think I'm 30% into the book. I'm 17% into this book. So I'm still at the very, very beginning, still at the setup phase. So far, loving what I read. This book got excellent, excellent reviews. Um, it's One Second After by William... Why do they not give his whole name? It starts, the last name starts with an R. Um, I'll let you know if it's good. I'll give you his whole name. Um, I want to say something like Forrester. I don't know where the R, maybe the R is his middle name. I don't know. Um, but so far so good. And I'll let you know if it turns out to be um, a worthwhile read for sure. Because um, I like passing on books. I'm a book nerd. Books make me happy. So, um... What else have I been up to? Lots of things, actually, because I'm trying to get back into this, um, back into the swing of things and my normal um, way of life, which <laughs> basically for the past month has consisted of playing Clash of Clans. <laughs> Podcaster confession time. Oh, I know you've missed this. <laughs> Podcaster confessions. This will be like, you know, 105. <laughs> I play Clash of Clans. It is a game on the iPad, and it's a ridiculously addictive game that involves war and um, clans and training up troops and fighting battles. I know that doesn't seem like something I would do, but yeah, kind of addicted. And it sucked up a lot of my time. Sorry about that. <laughs> Seriously, can't get enough of it. It's insane. Um, if any of you play, let me know because this is one of those things where I kind of want to know that I'm not the only crazy person out there that is addicted to this really weird game. So, yeah, let me know I'm not crazy. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I've also been catching up on my podcast, um, which... Uh, podcaster confessions remind me of that because I've been catching up with Steph on Knitting Samurai and I'm like a month, uh, maybe a little more than a month behind on hers. And she talked about that she was going to do a podcaster confession and kind of like, you know, steal a page from my book. Steph, you can do whatever you want, girl. <laughs> um, and I just thought that was hilarious because, you know, I'm just an honest person. It's just who I am. I'm blunt. In fact, Stephanie, you said this on your podcast. You're just the kind of person that just puts it out there, right? It's just who you are. I am the same way. I'm just like brutal honesty. I'd rather just tell you the truth up front and that be that. You know, it's just easier. <laughs> Yours probably comes from like strong convictions. Mine comes from just sheer laziness. I don't feel like lying. Lying takes up a lot of energy. <laughs> so, brutally honest, yeah, addicted to Clash of Clans. <laughs> 
So, um, but other than that, uh, I've been catching up on my podcast. Um, I watch Karen from Around the Twist and can't even pretend like I hope she watched my podcast because, you know, not seeing that happening. She's awesome. I love her, you know. And so um, those are the two I've been able to catch up on a little bit. And then I've got, yeah, I've got a queue a mile long of all the ones I want to catch up on. So I don't know. We'll see. Time will tell if I can catch up on all of them or if I just need to kind of start fresh. Sometimes if I try to catch up too much, um, I'll feel kind of bogged down. So a lot of times it's easier for me just to say, okay, I'm going to start fresh and just start watching everybody's new episodes. And then if I run out, I can go back and kind of go through the queue little by little. So we'll see. Yeah, that's how it is. Um, next week was supposed to be the Arkansas Fiber Fest, and we had to cancel it. I had mentioned or alluded to this earlier. We had to cancel it. Stitches is having their event in Dallas, which is three hours, three and a half hours from Hot Springs. And yeah, we can't compete with Stitches. We're a small fiber festival, um, and we just can't. The, a lot of our vendors um, and participants and teachers came from Texas, from, from the Dallas, Houston, that area. Um, so when Stitches made their event on the same weekend as ours, we lost vendors, teachers, participants, and we just can't compete. Stitches is too big. We were a small festival, and so we had to cancel. And this left us in quite a quandary because... Um, you know, where do you go from here? What do you do? So we've had um, B from Hot Springs who has um, a knit store there, a beautiful knit store, wonderful knit store, and she's awesome. Like, she's seriously, like, awesome sauce. And she is going to hold an event at her shop, and it's she's calling it the smallest festival in Arkansas. It's so cute. She's going to have a couple vendors there. October House will be there, who you know that I love. I love October House. And, um... She's going to have a place set up for us to kind of take some donations to help us zero out our budget. Because we're nonprofit. Nobody's getting paid. It's not like we're trying to cut paychecks or anything. We just want to be able to get people's refunds to them and zero out the account, pay, pay our dues, so to speak, and, you know, that kind of thing. So um, she's helping us with that. She's even hosting some classes and is going to donate some of the money to us to help us be able to... Um, you know, pay back what we owe. Um, it's another one of those times where the knitting community has come together to help us, and I'm really excited about that. Um, if you're curious as to maybe how to help us out, um, send me a private message on Ravelry, um, or you can use the PayPal link on my website, my, my WordPress website. Um, I have a PayPal link there for donations, um, for donations for me for the podcast, but if you would want your donation to go to help paying off the Arkansas because if we can pay off the event and maybe even have a little left over we can try again next year and that's our goal our goal is to try again next year because we want to have this festival we want to have this you know for 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 our state you know and for for the people that come for the surrounding people this is an event that that helps um, small vendors it helps um, you know it's, it's more than just a get together. It's, it's there to help the fiber arts community. And, um, that's the spirit in which it was started in was, was to, to be there for the people. And that's what we'd like to carry on. Um, obviously hopefully have it on a weekend where no one else will host their event. <laughs> um, so, um, if you're interested, you can put in the donation button for AFF. And I will absolutely withdraw that and put it straight into that account. Um, that would be awesome if you're willing to do that. Um, so um, I appreciate the letters of encouragement I've gotten um, from Dallas. Uh, the Dallas Fiber Fest has sent us multiple letter letters of encouragement because um, they know what we're going through. They're, 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 I say they're a small festival. They're not a small festival. They're huge. <laughs> they're awesome. Um, and but they've been encouraging us and, and it's been really nice. The, the, the outreach we've had has been really amazing. Um, so 
who knows? Hopefully we can come back from this. I'd like to hope so. We'll see. Um, I would be really, really sad if the event ceased to exist. So um, here's hoping, right? Um, okay. Back to happier things again. Ah, my goal is not to draw you down, I swear. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, so podcast. Um, Russ and I are going through um, The Office again. I love The Office, right? Um, yeah, I just got like 3 million text messages. It makes me think that like maybe something... Okay, no. Just want to make sure it wasn't a kid that, that needed me. All's well. <laughs> um, so... Getting back into the swing of things made me go hunting for projects because I told you last week that all I had was the hat and the scarf that I started and I'm thinking, you know, I know it's been a month since I've really gotten into my knitting because of, you know, everything going on, but surely I have more than that, right? So I took down, I started like pulling things out, pulling things out and yeah, found all kinds of stuff. Got all excited all over again, like stupid excited, like yeah, calimetry. How could I have forgotten that I was doing the calimetry? Oh my gosh. And had just cast one on before I had to put it down in this beautiful um, Debbie Bliss. No, go Rowan. Is this the one that I'm knitting on? Yes. Yes. And super excited about it. Already have it cast on this far. And the calimetry, for those you don't remember, is this. Um, this is a free pattern on Nitty, so go for it. Awesome. You know that I've knit a ton of these. You're probably tired of seeing them by now, but I'm not tired of knitting them. So, hmm. yeah. Um, at the beginning, as you can tell, probably we'll have this one done fairly soon. Super excited about that. And the next one, I already have the yarn in the bag because, yeah, I like knitting them that much. I went digging through my stash and found this Knit Picks Galileo in the Firefly colorway. Um, I knit with this before when it first came out. And I want to say it was, I loved it. I'm kind of worried. It's supposed to be a DK weight yarn, but it looks kind of thin to me. So I'm not 100% sure. This just might be a smaller calimetry, and that's okay because I know tons of tiny little girls that I can get it to, and that's okay. Um... I also found that, and I can't believe I forgot that I was working on these because they're making me happy, was the Skype socks knit out of the Unwind Yarn Company's uh, ethereal colorway in their, um, this is their MCM, yeah, MCN, um, merino cashmere nylon, and no progress. That's why I'm not really like pulling them out for you a bunch because there's been no progress, but that's okay because now I know they're there and I remember they're there and I'm going to knit on them because they make me happy, right? Okay. Now this makes me happy. I found this hidden away. Don't know how I forgot about it, I guess, because I got too many projects going on and I know I'm not the only knitter out there, so don't judge me. <laughs> um, I cast on and I've been knitting on, the, this is what I've been knitting on. These socks, have because they, I had just the cuff done and it's out of the patents. Um, don't want to lie to you. Yeah, it's the patents Croy sock in the blue stripe, blue stripe rag is the colorway. And I had just finished, let's get these away from the edges of the needles, um, the cuffs on these and I picked them up the other day while I was watching TV and I am going up the leg now. So I was probably right about here a couple days ago. So that's how much progress I've gotten done on these because they're super fun. And I love the colors. The colors are so, I don't know, vibrant, awesome. Yeah, they're just cool. And they're not matchy matchy, obviously not matchy matchy. Doesn't matter. I'm cool with that. Um, there are times when I want them to be matchy matchy, but there are times when I just feel like it doesn't matter. And this is one of those times and they're making me happy. So I am looking forward to finishing those and I've got to decide who they're for because if they're for the boys, it's probably time to turn the heels because the boys don't like tall socks. Um, if they're going to be for hubby, then I have quite a bit to go on the cuff. So kind of need to decide that, right? Yeah. Okay. 
to the last project. This makes me sad. I need your help. Ugh. Okay, so remember how I was super excited about the fact that I wanted a scarf and I started with the Judy Magic cast on and you saw like this much of it? Yeah, okay, so I got how much I'm getting done, right? Right? This is, and it was making me, it's making me happy. It's still making me happy. I love it. I think it's awesome. I'm like, this is going to be the best scarf ever. Until I realized. Not going to happen. There's no way that this is going to make a proper scarf. This thing will be like three feet long. And then what am I going to do with it? Right? Okay. Yeah. So I got to frog it. Again, this is one of those yarns that I have cast on three different projects on and had to frog. So this is one of those yarns that wants to be a certain thing, but I don't know what it wants to be. And so, yeah, I need your help. Okay, so I don't know what to do with it. I was thinking that maybe I should do The Easy by Martina Bem because... Steph from Knitting Samurai looked super excited about hers. Um, and I own like all the Martina Bem patterns, but not that one. Right? Because I'm a huge fan of hers. Like, seriously. I love her projects. I've, I've knit the Hitchhiker. I think I own the uh, the Trilli Trillion. I, want, I, I think I own all of them, but the easy. And I'm thinking that maybe that's what this needs to be is that pattern. I don't know. And I don't want to buy it. Because what if I buy it and that's not what it wants to be? Help. What do I do? Do I just turn it into another hitchhiker? Because I usually give my hitchhikers away. They make great gifts. I, I don't even think that I have any hitchhikers. I've knit like three of them and I don't think I have any of them because I've given them all away. Um, so honestly, I don't know what to do. So what do you think? Should I bite the bullet, buy the pattern, try to knit it? I don't know. Steph, maybe you should like chime in and tell me because you seemed really happy about yours even though you weren't really happy about the yarn. And that tells me a lot because when the yarn makes you mad and you still enjoy the final project, then it must be an awesome knit. So... If anybody else out there has had that same thing, because see, and I love this yarn. This yarn is amazing. It really is. And I think it would knit up beautifully because the stripes are very, very small. And so, um, the, like the stripe sequence is, is just tiny. And I think that would lend well to one of those, is it asymmetrical type shawls? I don't know what they're called. I kind of, you know, I don't know. So I don't know. I just don't know and need your help. So, um, because I'm tired of frogging this yarn. If I keep frogging it, it's just going to fall apart. I mean, seriously, I need to like, whatever I passed on next needs to like stick for reals. So, okay. Do I have anything else for you? Hmm. I did do some semblance of show notes. No, that's it. And my phone is blowing up. I don't know what's going on. I'm not sure if I should like... Okay. All right. It's all good. <laughs> we're trying to take care of the, the Arkansas Fiber Fest stuff, so we're all kind of, you know. So um, I guess on that note, I'll let you go and go take care of my business. And um, remember, if you want to make a donation, go use my donation button on my website. And just somewhere in there in the notes or something, put for AFF. Um, that'd be awesome. And... I really enjoyed talking to you guys. I feel like maybe I'm getting back into the swing of things and this is like, yeah, I'm feeling good. This is, yeah, this is the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> Cause I'm back on the floor. Before I was having to record in my dining room back there in a chair because I couldn't get on the floor cause I couldn't get back up. <laughs> And now I can. So yeah, I'm really excited. So um, I will see you guys in a week because I'm getting back to my normal recording schedule and that makes me happy. And I hope you guys have an awesome, awesome weekend. And because it's Friday. Yeah, it's Friday. So have a great weekend and I will see you next week. And don't forget, always be awesome. Bye guys.